Hi, welcome back to Pia Tech Talk. Today I thought that we should take a look in the MCX family from NXP. But don't be discarded by that I'm talking about NXP in this one. I will also continue with videos on STM32 in coming videos, so stay tuned for that. NXP have two families of microcontrollers. That is the Kinetis coming from Freescale and the LPC family that comes from Philips. But they have now decided that they will take the best parts out of the Kinetis family and the best part out of the LPC family and created a new family that they called MCX. When the MCX family is fully launched in the end of 2024, it will consist of these four families. They all have in common is the CPU, the Cortex M33. Starting with the biggest MCU, MCXN, where N denotes neural. This is offering multi-core MCU for AI and ML applications and was the first derivative to be launched. The one that we are going to take a closer look on today was launched a couple of weeks ago and that is the MCXA. This is a general purpose microcontroller in single core, targeted for a wide range of applications. Then we have the MCXW, and this is their wireless MCU, enabling Zigbee, Bluetooth, low energy, thread and meta protocols. And at last, and at last the device that is now going, not yet launched is the MCXL, and this is their low power MCU targeted for battery driven application. The MCXL is launched uh, date in late 2024. This is the block diagram over the MCXA family. And I thought that we should just take a sh short peek into the different building blocks and starting with the microcontroller. The CPU that NXP choose for their MCX family is the Cortex M33. And it's equipped with the floating point unit, single precision and the single instruction multiple data. And you get it in the clock frequency on 48 megahertz and 96 megahertz. We shall also take a look into the next building block, which is the memory. For the MCXA family, you will get up to 1 MB of internal flash, and the RAM will go up to 128 KB. And the RAM will also have a partition where the 8 KB will be with error correction. When it comes to interfaces, there is a lot of them. You have parallel interface, you have a lot of UARTs, you have SPI, you have I3C, which is the later version of I2C, and you have CAN in it, and you have USB for um, full speed, and it's uh, with built-in PHY, so you don't need an extra PHY on it, and you can run it on Crystal S as well. Next block are timers, and there are dedicated motor control timers, so you can actually run 6 PVM outputs on it. And there are a lot of 32-bit uh, timers and windowed watchdogs, low power timers, micro timers, and event timers, so you can have a, no shortage of timers at least. Despite being a general purpose microcontroller, it's very feature rich when it comes to analog parts. You have, for instance, two single-ended uh, ADCs sampling rate up to 4 mega samples per second in 12-bit mode. And uh, you can use that uh, ADC over the full range, voltage range 1.7 to 3.3 volt. And you can have it in up to 16 per channel, package dependent there. And you also have an OPM that you can use at the AGC and internal voltage reference. Uh, you also have an analog comparator uh, and you can uh, feed that through the DAC that is an 8-bit to set the set point for the DAC. So you can do quite a lot of analog parts also in this general purpose microcontroller. To help you in developing on this MCX microcontroller, NXP have just launched this Freedom Board that you can see here. And I will make some tests and some uh, board upbringing and demos on this in coming videos. And I will also be then using the MCU Expresso IDE that is an Eclipse based software. You can also run it on uh, Microsoft uh, VS Code or Kyle or if you like that instead. 
but I will use the MCU Expresso. So I hope that you find that interesting and you learned some. If you did, please give the thumbs up and give me some comments in the chat below. And if you are not yet a subscriber, please consider to do so. Hope to see you soon. Stay safe.